Planet of the Humans is a documentary from a filmmaker named Jeff Gibbs. The documentary is produced by famous filmmaker Michael Moore. And Gibbs adopts that Michael Moore tactic of just kind of confronting people face to face uh, on the issues of the environmental impacts being discussed in this documentary. The film was released to YouTube for free this week, coinciding with Earth Day 2020, which just happened a couple days ago. I saw it pop up on my recommends list on YouTube and decided to check it out, never having heard of the film before. So really what I expected to see was kind of your typical documentary, kind of, you know, these reminders we get every year or so, usually focused on climate change and how mankind and our activities on this planet is affecting the entire globe in a negative way. Chances are that each of you has seen at least one of these kind of documentaries, going as far back as Al Gore's An Inconvenient Truth, or a documentary like uh, Chasing Ice, which documented the melting ice caps, and even more recently, the documentary Leonardo DiCaprio was involved in called Before the Flood. Watching Planet of the Humans, though, I was actually surprised that the focus is not primarily on climate change. I mean, surely this is a topic that gets discussed, but it really is an overview of the overall impact humans are having on the planet in every sort of way, everything from the food we eat to the cars we drive. And I was surprised to see that the documentary really takes aim at the green movement itself, at people that have propped themselves up as the pioneers of renewable and sustainable energy, people that want to get rid of fossil fuels and move into things like solar power and wind energy. These are actually the people that Jeff Gibbs, the filmmaker, is going after in this documentary. So that was something I really didn't see coming, and really that approach makes this documentary stand out a bit, even though the way it's filmed and put together is pretty typical documentary fare. Gibbs is really attacking the green industry movement just for what it is, an industry. And the film ultimately posits that that is the entire problem, that industry in oil extraction and all the technology we've built to create energy up to this point is really the problem, and that green energy development really has similar issues when it comes to CO2 emissions and the types of materials that are used to create these things in the first place. So while we think of things as solar panels and wind turbines as things that will relieve us of our reliance on fossil fuels, the documentary goes into the manufacture of those products and we see how coal apparently is a primary component and ingredient in creating the solar panels and that they have to be burned and melted to create the panels themselves, emitting the same carbon emissions that we are going after coal plants saying that they shouldn't be emitting. Now, an area of the film that was particularly impactful for me was when they start talking about electric vehicles. So in our household, we have two electric vehicles. Those are our only two cars. We have a Nissan Leaf and a Tesla Model S. Both were purchased used, by the way. But that's kind of like our lifestyle. We've gotten rid of gas and oil as far as it goes for our private transportation needs. And, you know, we charge with electricity that we assume is renewable. We pay a little bit extra for renewable sources through our electricity provider and the public chargers set up around the Austin area where we live are all labeled with this badge that says green choice again allegedly hinting that the energy you're actually getting is from renewable only sources. So in the documentary they kind of go after electric car manufacturers they definitely target Tesla a few times and really point out that the manufacturing process to make not just the vehicles but the battery packs themselves are emitting tons of harmful CO2 emissions just in the building process and that the assembly of the battery packs uses a lot of rare earth minerals and often relies on child labor in these very poor countries where those minerals are harvested. So as an EV driver, I kind of felt personally convicted on these issues, even though they're topics that I've heard discussed before. People that don't like electric cars uh, usually point out that, oh, they're being charged by energy uh, that might have been produced by a coal plant, and oh, you know, they're still being produced with the same toxic chemicals, and that the carbon emissions that come from producing the car and the battery pack, you know, that you're buying a car with carbon emissions built in, those are all things that EV drivers like myself know, but I think in our heads and the information that at least I've looked at, we kind of remedy that fact with the reality that the car, yes, yeah, starts with a bunch of carbon emissions front-loaded, but the over the life of the car, you know, anywhere from as short to six months and a year, again, from what I've read, uh, that you can really catch up and break even on those carbon emissions, and then for the rest of the life of the car, you're no longer emitting CO2 emissions like a normal gas car does. 
but the documentary doesn't really accept any of those explanations and really doesn't even provide the avenue to hear responses to the claims that the filmmaker is making. And I think that might be a weak point of the film. You know, the filmmaker himself, Jeff Gibbs, doesn't really seem to have any scientific credentials. He's really just an environmentalist, which is fine and, you know, makes him in a great position to make the film. But as far as the claims, uh, you know, we're really using only a handful of people, people that seem unified on a certain position. And then all the guys that he's kind of trapping and like, you know, kind of blasting them with unexpected questions. Um, it's just kind of a tactic that doesn't resolve the issue, I don't think. I really would rather hear him sit down with these people, have a conversation about it so we can really hear back and forth. Because when you just kind of unexpectedly ask someone a controversial question, uh, of course they're a little bit leery. They see a camera's on them and, you know, they may not even want to answer the question at all, which makes them look defensive and like they're not telling the truth. Besides that though, we do get a lot of information that does seem well researched. We get a bunch of people talking about these issues that are involved on the forefront of these environmental kind of protest groups and nonprofit organizations that are fighting, you know, these corporations about their carbon emissions. Something that comes up and becomes a rather large part of the documentary is a discussion about biomass or biofuels. This is something that I've never heard of before. Apparently it's a type of energy generation that you know green and environmentally friendly activists and uh, proponents of green energy are on board with. But to hear it described in the documentary, it does not sound uh, very flattering at all. It requires a lot of cutting down trees and you know chipping them up into little wood chips, burning these chips and somehow getting energy out of that. Of course, burning wood chips releases the carbon that's in the wood, so it's still a carbon emitting way to create energy. And again, a big chunk of this documentary is confronting people on that topic, how apparently, you know, around the country, in the US at least, and perhaps around the world, there is this focus on using biofuels as a shift from fossil fuels, but they still seem to have pretty high carbon emissions and they're destructive as far as deforestation is concerned. What the film really settles on though, as far as any type of solution, really unfortunately doesn't have anything to do with any green product. It's not saying to do solar panels this way or to install wind turbines this way or to make electric cars out of different materials. Unfortunately, the only solution that really gets addressed in the documentary is slowing the rate at which humans are populating the planet that there's simply too many of us and we've multiplied so quickly, so fast in a relatively short period of time compared to the Earth's history and that the hard truth people really don't wanna face is the fact that we have overpopulation that simply cannot be supported by the Earth's resources. Which is really kind of a bummer of a message to get. You know, especially if you're someone like myself who considers themselves to be environmentally friendly and is willing to make small concessions and lifestyle changes, you know, while still living comfortably in, in hopes that those changes, you know, have a greater good for the entire planet. Um, it's really hard to hear that message. And I guess a critique of this film is that I really don't have a lot of hope by the end. And I don't know if that's the intention. Uh, it really is kind of a dour ending. Uh, and you know, maybe that's what we need. Everything that we see usually has a happy ending and tells us like, you know, if we all work together, we can figure this out. Technology might create a solution. And that's just really not how the ending of this documentary comes together. There is one particular part of the documentary that I wish came with just like a little bit of a disclaimer. If you're sensitive to animal abuse especially, you're not going to like some of these images. And it's just a, a small part, maybe you know less than a minute probably. And I don't exactly know where it is in the documentary, but once you get to the section talking about uh, harvesting animal fat uh, for energy generation, maybe just skip ahead like a minute or two there to be safe. Because there are some shots of these whole, you know, whole bodies of cows and even horses being thrown in. I mean, they're dead, but they're being thrown into this meat grinder. And uh, yeah, it's just an image that I really wish I hadn't seen. Uh, of course, it's trying to be effective and make you feel a certain way upon seeing that. And, and I understand that approach, uh, but honestly, it was just something that I wish I could have gotten a little warning about and skip past. So hopefully that does you a favor and uh, just try to watch out for that segment if you decide to take a look at this documentary. All in all, we get a documentary that takes an interesting approach by confronting the green movement itself 
and basically holding these people accountable to the fact that the message of 100% renewable, sustainable energy really isn't exactly what they're living up to. But again, I do wish the ending was more actionable, like that there is something that I can do, people like you and me, but I think the truth might be that people like us really can't make a huge change that the changes are really going to have to come from a very high level. They're going to have to be more regulations. Companies are going to have to change the way that they do things. And of course, people like us need to make changes too. But as the documentary indicates, the green industry movement is still an industrial movement and still is contributing to the problem of not only climate change, but other issues that affect our air and water and just the growth of life on the face of the planet. So during this time of pandemic, I can see why people wouldn't exactly be excited about watching Planet of the Humans. You know, it's a, kind of a downer by the end of it, uh, but it really does confront us with some hard truths. So I'm still going to call it my stream of the week because it definitely was the most impactful thing I saw this week. Again, it's up on YouTube for free. I think it's going to be there for like 30 days and it's only been up for like two or three days at this point. So if the topic sounds like something you're interested in, I recommend that you watch it, but also do your own research and kind of try to look at counter arguments to all the statements that are being made in this film.